Hello, my name's Damon Kowarski. I'm a printmaker based in Melbourne, Nam, Australia. And this morning I'm going to talk to you about preparing an etching plate for drawing. I use copper plate. It's a very lovely material to work with. And this particular copper plate, I think is 0.9 millimeters. Often I use 0.7, uh, slightly thinner is lighter and easy to carry it's also a little bit cheaper before i came today i sanded the paper sanded the plate with wet and dry sandpaper i started with a 400 then a 600 and then an 800 and the reason i do that is to get rid of any surface scratches because the copper has been produced in an industrial facility and it's been transported and carried and stored and I want to make sure that the surface is nice and clean and even for my drawing. I also rounded the corners. That's just a habit of mine. I like the look of it. It doesn't, it's not necessary. You can have hard square corners too. And I put a very slight bevel on the edge of the plate. So I just very lightly filed the edges. So it wasn't too sharp. And also, so when I am sanding, the sandpaper can go all the way to the edge of the plate. Okay, the next stage is to degrease the copper plate. Uh, because the hard ground is oil-based, you want to make sure that there's no grease on the surface of the copper that could interact with the hard ground and make it weaker. I use soy sauce to degrease the plates. It's also possible to degrease them using ammonia but that's not very pleasant to be around. People also use cleaning products like Jif or it's like a, a degreaser, you know, a, a kitchen cleaner but actually the very best is just soy sauce. It's harmless. I use the cheapest soy sauce I can find and it works really well. So I put a little bit of soy sauce onto the plate And then I've got some old blanket, uh, etching blanket, felt blankets that I've rolled up. You can also just use a clean rag. And then I rub it all over the plate to get rid of any grease. It's important to make sure you go all the way to the edges because it's very easy to degrease just in the center of the plate, but you really need to make sure that the whole plate is degreased. Also, it's more likely while you've been carrying the plate that you've held it at the edges. So that's more likely to be a place where there's grease from your fingers. Okay, now to test it's been properly degreased, I'll wash it. Now, you can see that the water sits evenly over the whole plate. If there were greasy patches, the water would push away from it, like, uh, you know, or, because oil and water uh, oppose each other. So this plate is perfectly degreased. The water is sitting flat across the entire plate. So I'm ready to go to the next stage. Okay, so now I'm going to put hard ground on the plate. Hard ground is a mix of bitumen, rosin and beeswax. You can either buy a commercial hard ground, this one is Charbonnel, which is really the best, or you can make it and there are recipes for making hard ground on the internet. The bitumen is what protects the plate from the acid, but bitumen by itself is a little bit sticky, as you would know if you have walked on a freshly made road and your feet stick to it. So they add a little bit of rosin, which is from pine trees, and that makes it a little bit brittle, but they also add a bit of beeswax to make it flexible. So it's, it's a nice combination of the stickiness of bitumen, the brittleness of the rosin, and the flexibility of the beeswax. Uh, for me, the Charbonnel is the best. 
There's also graphic chemical in the USA makes be, makes hard ground. And I've got it on a hot plate at about 85 degrees centigrade. You don't want it to be too hot or it starts to burn the hard ground. And if it's too cold, it won't melt. So you can see that it's melting nicely as I apply it. You want a good coating of hard ground, but you don't want too much. And then I use a roller like you would use for lino cut or relief printing. This roller I only use for hard ground, so I don't use it for anything else. I don't clean it in between and it just keeps being used. So I evenly roll it across the whole plate Again, paying attention to the corners to make sure that there's hard ground everywhere. The first step is just to get a basic coating over the whole plate and then I'll make it more even after. You can see how it's got a nice kind of golden color as it goes on. If the hard ground is too thick, you're, well, number one, you're wasting hard ground and it's, you know, it's either expensive to buy or you have to make it. Uh, but the bigger problem is that if the hard ground is too thick, it can flake off. Equally, if the hard ground is too thin, it won't protect the copper properly. So I might just put a tiny bit more just to be sure. But really, this is this is a pretty good coating, and you can see that I'm not. If I just roll backwards and forwards, I'm really moving the hard ground in the same place. So I pick up the roller and go again and go again and again, paying attention to the edges and the corners. If you roll quickly you take hard ground off the plate and if you roll slowly it reapplies from the roller nice even coating over the whole plate and that's it uh wait a second with etching it's important to do each step carefully and thoroughly and then you know that what you do will have predictable results and also that if something does go wrong you can you can more easily work out where the problem might have occurred if the processes are a little bit random and chaotic it's very hard to know which exactly is the problem that you need to solve. There, yeah. so you can see that's an even coating. While the plate is hot, it's very delicate. So I will carefully take this across to my table and leave it to cool down. Okay, the final stage in getting this plate ready to draw on is that I need to smoke the hard ground. And that's a process where I use a candle to put carbon from the smoke into the hard ground. It, the heat from the candle melts the, melts the hard ground and the carbon from the smoke then goes into the, mixes with the hard ground and it has a couple effects. The, most important is that it changes the color of the hard ground to black. So when you're drawing, it's very easy to see what you're doing. At the moment, the color of the hard ground is a little bit darker than the color of the plate, but not so much. And once it's smoked and it's black, it's easier to see. The other is that the smoking process strengthens the hard ground, it reinforces it. And the third is that when you're rolling on with the roller, there's lot, or thousands of tiny, tiny little dots where the hard ground didn't go. Same as if you're rolling up a lino cut, and you don't quite put enough ink on the roller 
you get little white dots when you print. So when you smoke, the hard ground melts and spreads out and fills in all those little dots. So you end up with a much more consistent hard ground. So I've put it upside down, it's just held slightly precarious but it will work. I've got some candles, I like that. I've got newsprint on the floor to catch the wax so as not to make too much of a mess in my studio. Then I hold the candle so that the flame is touching the hard ground. I don't want it too close because then you get a lot of soot and I don't want it too far because then you don't get a result. So I'm just moving slowly around the plate. As the plate heats up with the heat from the candle, you can see the hard ground melting. And that's the point at which the soot from the smoke goes into the hard ground. It's best to do this in a place that's not too windy because you don't want the candle blowing around and things or blowing out. It's a slow process. You need to just be patient and work your way around. Okay, so that's now completely smoked. I've done an even coating. Um, I will then let the plate cool down because of course at the moment it's gonna be very hot having just had a candle put on it for a couple minutes. And when that's cool, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you can see the plate's been smoked, and it's quite nice and black. Uh, the only final step is, you can see where I started before the plate got hot and the hard ground melted, you end up with a bit of a sooty deposit. That's harmless, and I just polish that off with a soft cloth. It, it won't do anything, it's just, you, know, you don't want that going on your hands. So just give the plate a very light, polish and again it's a soft cotton cloth no solvents no dirt no scratches um, you'll also notice that there are tiny little or there are where the nails that were holding it upside down there and there and there and after I've done my drawing I'll just stop them out with a bit more bitumen so any any kind of imperfections that you can see in the hard ground can be fixed with either bitumen or liquid hard ground but that's pretty good to go and I'm going to start my new etching this afternoon. Thank you for joining me on this and I hope it's been helpful to you.